Hey everyone, it's Nicole here. Today we're going over how to start your own cottage food operation. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about what you can sell under a cottage food operation and to whom you can sell it. So let's get started. So before we get started on cottage food operations, let me give you a little background on myself. I started this business in 2016. I started it as a teaching venture. So I went to pastry school way back when, 2010, out in Chicago. And we moved back to California for my husband to do his residency program. And we had children and all that jazz. So I was out of the kitchen for a long period of time and wanted to get back into it, but I couldn't leave my baby. Couldn't leave my son behind. I was encouraged to start going into people's homes and have what I called pastry parties, which were basically interactive demonstrations with people. And it was an amazing time. It lifted my spirits, you know, after being a new mom, it can be a little challenging for anyone. So it was definitely great to get back into career mode. And once I did enough pastry parties, people liked the product so much, they wanted me to sell it. So I had already gotten a business license through my uh, through Pasadena and my DBA, which is a doing business as, through Los Angeles County. So I had those, but it wasn't for selling. So I couldn't sell my product yet. So what I had to do was get a cottage food operation license. And I was so confused. I was like, I already have my business license. I didn't understand. It's a very convoluted process. And that's why I wanted to try to make it more straightforward for you guys in the process because I had two kids in tow at this point going back and forth from city halls and I was confused and pretty darn frustrated and at my wits end to be honest so if i can help anyone in the process of building their own business um that's what this whole business series is about and i hope it will help bring things to light and bring things in a straightforward manner okay let's get started with defining what a cottage food operation is so Cottage food operations, or CFOs for short, which sounds very fancy, um, CFOs are a result of the cottage food law that was passed in 2013. So in 2013, most states adopted this law that allowed home bakers or cooks to um, sell their food and start a business as a stepping stone to get um, their foot in the door for the food industry. Costs are so high to open up your own restaurant or brick and mortar um, niche bakery. So this was seen to help the community. CFOs are meant for supporting your local community. So there's no shipping. You need to sell within your region, which goes into the jurisdiction of it all. So each individual city or most counties, but some cities have their own health department, each county has their own health department that regulates your product and what you put out. So you will have to check with your own health department. But in this video, I'm gonna try to streamline it and say mostly what is passed, at least in California, for your CFOs, what you can sell at this point and what and who you can sell it to. All right, so there are two different types of licensing that you can have under a cottage food operation or a CFO. Class A, that is what I have and that is when you're selling directly to your customer or your consumer. So you can do farmer's markets like that, you can sell directly out of your home, you can get permits through um, the city to sell at pop-ups, 
you can sell directly to your customer with a class A license. A class B is far more expensive. In California, at least, a class A is about $107 for a year, and a class B is $400 for the year. So they're quite different in the price range. However, you can sell a lot more potentially with a class B because this allows you to sell not only directly to your customer, but also you can sell wholesale. So your local retail or cafes, if they're not doing max, if they have like a coffee shop, you could sell your macarons, so that would pair really great with them. So there's lots of options for wholesale with the class B, and that's still right out of your home. So that's really cool. Awesome option, however, I have dealt with a few cafes and you will run into, obviously when wholesale, a lower price. So you wanna make sure specifically for you that when you're doing wholesale, you're getting your money's worth. The efficiency of a home kitchen is not as good as a commercial kitchen. So it's hard to get those wholesale prices that cafes are looking for. But if you can make it work, awesome, because then you can supply your your whole area and get a name for yourself and then you can go to that commercial kitchen next. So it's an awesome stepping stone. So we have to whom we can sell it to, but then let's answer that what we can sell. I've had so many people message me saying they looked up the restrictions and were floored. <laughs> and they're like, what do you actually sell then? Because a lot of counties will say you can't use butter you can't use cream, you can't use eggs, all these things. And yes, it can seem daunting when you look at the list. However, you can get creative and you can make really good product with the restrictions. And then you'll feel so lucky when you're moving up to that commercial kitchen and you can actually use a Swiss meringue buttercream or something to fill your macarons. Let's get into the list of things that have been approved, at least in California, and it tends to be very strict here. If it's okay here, I would expect it's okay for you as well. So the most recent list of non-hazardous foods that a cottage food operation can sell from their home is uh, baked goods without any cream fillings or meats or no cream cheese, nothing like that in the filling, just baked goods like your sourdough bread. Those are okay to sell from home. Nut brittles or toffee, it's okay to sell. Dried baking mixes are okay for you to sell. So those are like your brownie dry mix in a, in a jar and you just add water. You can sell hard candies, candied apples, gourmet popcorns, cereals and granolas, fruit pies, empanadas and tamales are okay. You can roast your own coffee, waffle cones, herb blends, chocolate covered non-perishable items like dried fruit, cotton candy, buttercream frostings that do not use cream cheese or egg whites, and confections such as salted caramel, marshmallows that don't use egg whites, and fudge. Those are all okay to sell. Fried and baked donuts, jams and jellies, and dried fruit powders was recently added as well. So after you look at your own list for your state and what's approved for you to sell from home, try not to be discouraged. It is limiting and it is frustrating, <laughs> but it has really helped me get creative with how I can use what they have approved on this list and may put them into my buttercreams or my ganaches to give them something special something that's not gonna just taste like a super sweet American buttercream. Uh, it's really fun to try to jazz things up. There are also products that are shelf stable that you can pre-purchase that you can put into your buttercreams and flavor. That's another option. Um, at first I was extremely reluctant to do this because I wanted everything from scratch. However, there are some artisan flavors like Amaretti that have awesome awesome flavors that are shelf stable and you can add those to your buttercreams and really it's it's cost effective and it makes a great product so those are things to look into for the future if you guys want to move forward with a cottage food business and to make your menu uh, 
um, very versatile. All right, so now we know what a cottage food operation is and what we can sell. The whole process of getting things approved and getting your license is a whole nother step that we'll go into on the next business vlog. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Please comment down below if you have specific questions about business and we can go further into all of this. We've got the next business vlog coming up and then if people are interested, we can keep them rolling. It really depends on you, so comment down below. Please start a conversation and we can share our knowledge on this. It's been, what, four years since I've had this business and I just love sharing it with you guys and helping you get a jump start. So like this down below, subscribe if you haven't already. You know my whole spiel and comment and it will help us know what you want to hear. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. Elbow popped. <laughs> Elbow pop and lock it. <laughs>